let me tell you <clears throat> about the most exciting moment of my life. We were speaking at the Clinton Global Initiative in front of a thousand world leaders, <clears throat> presidents of countries, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and even more watching live. We shared a stage with Obama, and most exciting of all was that we were finalists for the Holt Prize, a million dollar social entrepreneurship grant sponsored by Bill Clinton. <clears throat> and while we may have been so well prepared and looked like we really knew the business model that we were presenting like the back of our hand, I love this photo in particular because if you read the slide on the right, it says, what's our plan? And the truth is that just a few months prior, we really had no idea. We were talking that day about Sweet Bites, which is a social enterprise, half business and half charity that I founded alongside four other undergraduate students here at the University of Pennsylvania. The topic that we were trying to tackle is tooth decay, which affects 2.4 billion people across the world, making it the most common chronic illness, especially among children. Now, you might ask, what is the solution that we propose? And a bit ironically, it's candy. And not just any candy, but cavity-fighting chewing gum enhanced with xylitol, an all-natural um, sugar substitute that has proven dental benefits. And this summer, me and four of my closest friends lived in India, piloting the business and trying to answer one question. How do we get this gum to the kids who need it most? <clears throat> the story really starts at the Wharton Business School in a group study room just like this. We went through you know, all the motions that are associated with starting a business. We, you know, we thought really hard, and we brainstormed, and we you know, put marker to paper, and we came up with different kinds of market analysis and pricing analysis and built out supply chain models. Over the summer, we were fortunate enough to be part of an accelerator where we had office space, again, where we could whiteboard every element of our project. Again, we went step by step. We produced the gum. We got together all the requisite customs forms that our lawyers told us we needed to get it into India, and we shipped it out. But just in case it didn't, we stuffed our bags full of it. I'm talking about, I mean, every inch. <laughs> so, and here's a, I mean, here's a little spoiler alert. The gum never arrives from customs, so we, thank God we did. But when we got to India, the reality of the country that we had been imagining so hard from, from the university was so different from what we had expected. There were entire families riding around on motorcycles, trucks elaborately painted by their drivers with these beautiful mosaics and murals, cattle confidently marching through the streets defying the chaotic traffic. And somewhere in this chaos, in this beautiful but chaotic country, we had to implement this business model that we had premeditated. We've gone manufacturers to us to female entrepreneurs, local women in the community who already sell in the informal market to local children. Seemed easy enough. We would just have to convince local female entrepreneurs to start substituting out some of their product <laughs> for Sweet Bites gum. This proved <clears throat> much more difficult than we had anticipated. And the female entrepreneurs were not interested in changing their ways that had been set for, for sometimes for decades and they weren't interested in supplying a new product that they had never seen before and had never heard of. So this is Abi. He was actually one of our best friends, almost like the sixth member of our team. He was a Bangalore native, and he suggested that we look at Kiranas, or corner stores. This is a corner store, and if you live in an urban slum, you buy just about everything from this one location. In fact, the vast majority of the gum bought and sold each year in India occurs through locations like this. And so what do we do? We approach one of these store owners. We say, talk to him about Sweet Bites, and we say, would you be interested in maybe starting to supply this new and exciting product? And this guy, I remember him in particular, Deepak, he was very resistant. He really didn't want to do it, and he told us, okay, I'll accept the gum under one condition, that you give it to me for free, and I'll only pay you if somehow I'm able to sell it, which I don't think is possible. So we're looking around this country, and we're starting to feel this huge uncertainty. Like, we don't know if we're ever going to be able to accomplish anything. Is our business going to find traction? Are we going to be able to achieve our dreams? And we didn't know if that was possible. Are we going to end the entire summer, days dwindling by, and not be able to have anything to show for it? 
So in this uncertainty, we started at the base. We went straight into schools. The kids we were trying to serve, we had to meet them, or at least some of them. And I will never forget this. We were walking along the corridor, and I'm with one of the school administrators, a teacher or an administrator, I can't quite remember. And he's talking, telling, telling me that eventually we're going to be able to meet some of the students. And next thing I know, we walk out of this pavilion. I'm in front of 200 kids. The entire school had been assembled. And they all stand up at the same time and say, good morning, sir. And they sit back down and, um, at the same time. And you know, I look at him and I say, are we supposed to present now to the kids, like the entire school? We weren't really prepared. And he kind of eggs us on. You know, they're really excited. And we, OK. So we start talking about tooth decay and teeth brushing and how you have to brush your teeth two times a day and sweet bites gum. And these precious interactions with kids were so fundamentally important to our understanding of India. I mean, all, all other points aside, there was nothing like the excitement on their faces when they got to taste the gum they liked it. That was really meaningful to us. But we also learned what flavors they liked and what flavors they didn't like. <laughs> they're cute kids, right? I mean, they're, I, this, this guy, his name is, his name is Arjun. And, and he actually is a twin. The guy on the previous slide was actually his brother. Um, but they were quite remarkable young, young men. We figured out that we shouldn't be marketing to the kids. We should be marketing to the kids and not just the parents alone. We figured out what kinds of packaging they didn't like and what kind of packaging they did like. But most importantly of all, we discovered that trial in school drove sales at the corner store. We were walking home from school that day and we're pretty satisfied with, you know, that we had these great interactions with these kids. And all of a sudden, our phone starts buzzing. We pull it out of the pocket and say, who is it? It's an unknown number. And surprise, it's Deepak. He was actually calling us because he was, he was demanding that we provide him with four times this order for the next day because he said all the kids had come after school and bought out his entire stock. So almost through this serendipity, we discovered an extremely effective strategy, pairing educational initiatives with local corner stores. So we get back to the house, we're eating dinner, we're having a great time, and we're looking at each other and we're thinking, my gosh, like earlier today, we knew nothing. We had no idea of what the next direction of our business was going to take, and now we know something, and that was really powerful. We even had like this, this inside joke for it. We said it was, we called it Mother India, that there was this existential force that was pushing us from this uncertainty and bringing us to more creative and better solutions. And that force brought us next to Akshaya Patra. Akshaya Patra is one of the largest and most important NGOs in India. What they do is they distribute lunch in very impoverished schools where they can't afford to provide meals for their students. And clearly for us, there's a huge opportunity here where we can get access to over 10,000 schools in India alone through Akshaya Patra. Even when we were back in Philadelphia, we were still emailing them, their contact, their info, their press people, first name dot last name, every variation of, of their CEO at akshayapatra.org, and we received no response. And Abhi basically recommended, you know, why don't you guys just um, drive over and show up? And I looked at him and I said, Abhi, we can't just show up and expect to be greeted by someone. He's like, whatever, we'll just try it and we'll see what happens. Very uncertain. So we grab a quick coffee, and then the next thing we know, we're on the road to their headquarters. We get to the front desk, and a little hesitantly, I say, we're here, um, we're students from the United States, and we're here to, um, to see Mr. Venkat. And the next thing we know, we're being greeted at the office of the CEO, and we're presenting him these materials that we had prepared. We're going through the medical benefits, we're talking to him about the opportunities for Akshay Patra, and then he stops us and says, there's one really big opportunity for me here, so I'm in. And we're like, what is that? I think it's great for the kids, I think it's a very noble cause to try to treat tooth decay, but for me, there's also a huge branding opportunity because the possibility of doing a co-branded Akshaya Patra and Sweet Bites Gum enables them to market to the people that they serve where exactly this food had been coming from. So while we started in India with no relationships and very few contacts, through the summer we were able to make partnerships with dentists, schools, and other NGOs. And by the time we were leaving, the gum boxes finally arrived, if you can believe it. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds like a joke, like this is too perfect of a narrative arc, but we were, we were packing our bags, and I remember I was like looking under the, my mattress for you know, leftover socks, stray, whatever, and we were packing up our suitcases, ready to go, and we hear a knock on the door, and it's the DHL guy, he says, oh, your boxes have finally arrived, and I say, wow, just in time. So 
over the summer, we were able to amass a good deal of traction. We distributed over 100,000 pieces of gum to over 10,000 students on five continents through pilots in India um, and in other countries. And by the time we got to the Clinton Global Initiative and we were presenting to this big and prestigious audience, it really did seem like we had our ducks in a row, like we knew what we were doing. But what we would never tell Bill Clinton is that the truth of the matter is that we were just a bunch of goofy college kids who really wanted to change the world and wanted to take on one of the world's um, most severe and widespread diseases. But that when we arrived in India, within a few days, we had absolutely no plan. And that's the power of uncertainty. That somewhere in not knowing what the right path is, you can look around and find something that's so much more effective or more meaningful. I would even, I mean, maybe this is a little hyperbolic, but I would even go so far to say that if you premeditate everything and you plan everything in advance, you're more likely to fail because you'll get married to the wrong stuff, especially if you're making your plans in Huntsman Hall at the Warden School. <laughs> sorry. I, I love Ward, I'm sorry. But, but you know, I, what I'm trying to say is that if you have an idea, a dream you want to pursue, don't let your lack of qualifications or knowledge or prior experience preclude you from a, achieving those dreams. You know, I'm not more any qualified, my team's not more any qualified than anyone in this entire room to run or start Sweet Bites. I'm not a dentist, I've never lived in India until this summer, I don't speak Hindi, and I never started a business before. The only thing that we really had going for us was that we were comfortable embracing uncertainty. In essence, we were more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Thank you.